Shangshung Tene Kamne Sapjong. Shangshung Institute presents workshops. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for taking the time um, and the interest to join me today as I share um, a few pearls of wisdom um, from Ayurveda that hopefully will um, give you tools and um, ideas for the summer to come, which is officially starting tomorrow, but in many parts of the world, it's already started. And we can feel it, and um, it feels good. Um, somewhere for me is a real carefree time, and hopefully it is for you as well. And so we're going to try to bring that spirit into the class as well, to keep it light and interesting for everybody. So um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Shangshung Institute UK, um, Julia Jamyang for inviting me today, inviting me back. We had a first session for spring around the spring solstice. And um, if you didn't watch those um, that class or you weren't present for it, um, do feel free to watch it. It's free. Um, Shangshong Institute UK has put it on their YouTube channel and uh, you, can, you can watch it. And that way you'll get a lot of the information that I may not cover today. I'm just assuming that um, we're going to go on from there. Uh, so should you have specific questions about Ayurvedic theory that I may not cover today, um, you can um, go and look at those, um, those videos because they're full of information. So um, um, let's start out with um, the program for the day. And I'm going to do a screen share. And um, what I'm sharing on the screen um, is a little um, more than what you received in terms of the recipe booklet. And not to worry, you don't need to write everything down. You'll receive the whole um, set of slides that I'm going to show this morning. And in terms of questions, should you have questions, um, if you can keep them pertinent to um, what I'm sharing, and then also um, um, write them down, and then we'll have an, a couple uh, opportunities for questions, and you can answer then, and that way we'll stay on track, because I have a big program for you this morning. So um, screen share. Here we go. Okay. So... Um, Today we're gonna to work with managing um, our fire. And a question that I have for you this morning is, um, what is your relationship with fire? Is it a friend or is it a foe? Is it something that um, you're connected with? So um, these are things um, I'd, I'd be interested in hearing from you um, at some point, um, what your relationship to fire is. And another question would be, um, what does summer feel like where you are? Maybe you are um, tuned in from a place where it's winter. So um, the things I'm sharing today will be useful for um, when the summer season rolls around. But um, I'd be interested in knowing what summer feels like where you are. And that's something you can feel free to put in the chat if you'd like. Um, that'll give me an idea of my audience. Um, and um, I'll talk a little bit more about um, why I'm asking that a little later on. But it's true that summer can feel very drying in some parts of the world. and other parts of the world, it can feel moist and um, because of humidity, dry, dry heat versus humid heat. And um, that plays a role in the choices of food that we make and also um, the way that we prepare the foods. So here's our program for today. Um, so we're gonna talk about how to best eat for the summer. And the first thing we'll talk about is the spirit of um, eating in the summer. We'll talk as well about um, the qualities of summer, which um, in other words, um, is the language that Ayurveda uses to describe um, nature, to describe the five elements, but also to describe our feelings, um, physical feelings, emotional feelings, mental feelings, and also the qualities we find in food. So the words that I'm going to use um, are a specific language, specific to Ayurveda, but they are universal words. So when I say quality, I also mean characteristics. The word in Sanskrit is guna, and you can also translate that as texture or feeling. Um, another topic we'll discuss is agni. Agni is our metabolism or our, um, the energy behind our metabolism, our digestive fire, which plays a huge role, according to Ayurveda, in our global health. Um, Ayurveda would say that 80% of 
illnesses have their origin in our digestion. So it's a, um, something to befriend and take really good care of. And we'll talk about as well foods that we can enjoy and foods that you want to avoid for their um, qualities would increase um, aggravation or make us uncomfortable in the summer. But if you want to enjoy um, those foods that are to be avoided, um, some tips or some, um, some ways that you can enjoy them without them creating a nuisance for your health. We'll also um, talk about how to adjust um, for the season, things that we do differently now than we did in spring, um, things um, in terms of like the way we prepare food, when we eat it. So we'll talk about seasonal adjustments. And then we'll talk about the six tastes this afternoon, which are really important according to Ayurveda, because um, these six tastes correspond to shak, or excuse me, to each um, phase of digestion. And it's important to include these six tastes in our main meals of the day. And this is really more important than calories, than proteins, than carbohydrates, counting all those things. If you have each of the six tastes in your major meals of the day, it'll really help with the whole um, digestive process and also to have optimal digestion. And then because it's the hot time of the year and most of us feel dehydrated because of the heat, I'll give you some tips for how to stay well hydrated. And all of this through recipes, and if we have some time, I'll give you some ideas about um, self-care, some rituals that you can do to stay, um, to stay cool. So the first um, thing I want to talk about is the spirit of summer eating. And really the theme is going to be cool, light, free and easy. Cool to counterbalance the heat, light, um, because sometimes um, we feel heavy because of the heat. And when we feel light, we enjoy um, life better. And then free and easy, because um, if we feel um, constricted around um, what we're eating, then it kind of takes the joy out of eating. And summer's the time to really enjoy, to kick back, to relax. Um, and so we want to um, keep that in our cooking methods as well. So I'm going to um, bring you back so I can see everybody. Um, so the spirit of eating in the summer. So we have a change of season that has already started and but we're really starting to feel it now with the solstice and um, things that we've already changed naturally are changing our clothes. We don't wear the same kind of clothes we wore in spring or in winter. Um, then we also start to change what we eat it's because our body calls for these um, changes. We don't feel like sweet potatoes anymore. We feel like zucchini or cucumber that are juicy and um, rehydrating and fresh um, more than um, heavy and dense foods. So um, Ayurveda would say that if you follow the seasons with your food and eating seasonally, it's a great way of assuring good health. So that's really the main point that Ayurveda would suggest is eating with the seasons. And um, it's um, for some people, it's not really a new topic, um, but for others it is. But um, the idea is that we reduce what we ate in the season previous to now and really eat what we find locally and also what the body calls out for. So eating specific food provided by nature in the season. And um, nature is really, um, intelligent and in that she gives us what the body needs in any given season. Um, so unless you have a very serious illness or some very serious imbalance, um, the, the main thing I want to say today about eating in the summer is really um, try to be in a spirit of letting go and enjoying, which means fewer rules around food. A lot of us, especially if you're pitta in nature or the fire type, like myself, um, there's all kinds of um, ideas around food. What I should eat, what I shouldn't eat. Um, I have to have it this way or that way. Um, and we impose on ourselves all these kinds of rules that kind of um, put us in a box. And the idea is, um, of summer is really letting go of that, being really carefree um, and going with the flow. Because when we put ourselves in a box or we constrict, we, first of all, um, 
create lots of tension inside. And when we have tension, it um, is difficult to digest. It impairs our digestive function. And then also um, with all these concepts, we're more in the mental rather than in the feeling. And um, what Ayurveda instructs as well is really to eat intuitively at each meal to understand when we go to choose what we're going to cook, what does my body feel like? What does it need? And that's coming from a place um, really of, of, of balance, uh, in terms of what we choose. If we choose what's right for us, it's coming from a place of, of wisdom. Whereas if we're in a state of imbalance and uh, let's say we have a skin disorder, we have a breakout of rash all over the body and we go for chocolate, chocolate, something that is very heating and also um, uh, very expansive and very difficult for the liver to digest. And because the liver is linked to the skin, eating that chocolate is only going to exacerbate my condition. So um, maybe that choice wasn't the best, but it was coming from a place of imbalance. So we want to really, um, through the, um, the wisdom of Ayurveda with all its um, ideas and um, guidelines, let's call them guidelines rather than rules because rules seems really strict and um, there isn't an Ayurvedic police out there that's going to come if you um, don't follow the rules. So let's look at these as guidelines. So everything I share with you today, um, consider it a guideline. It's not a rule, it's not something strict. You don't have to do it. Um, but the idea is that um, you work with your conditions like um, our teacher, for those of you who are a part of the um, Dzogchen community, Nam Kainorba Rinpoche, um, one of his main teachings was um, do your best and then also um, work with your circumstances or your conditions. And that's what we need to do as well um, with food, especially in the summer. Um, we need to practice adaptability. So um, leave the rules, leave all the strictness behind, at least for the summer. When the fall comes, you can um, pick up again um, all the things that you need to do or you have to do. Um, but um, really um, tickle yourselves, laugh every day. This is all part of um, the spirit as well of eating in the summer. Okay, um, so let's talk about now um, another, going back to the screen share. Let's talk about this language of Ayurveda. And this will really help us to understand um, why um, I've chosen what I've chosen to share with you today, um, because um, the recipes that I um, have chosen, first of all, are in a, a spirit of being easy and simple, um, easy to prepare, kind of no nonsense. Also recipes that are affordable um, with ingredients that are accessible. Hopefully um, you didn't have too many difficulties finding the ingredients. I did, <laughs> but um, otherwise um, the idea is that um, these recipes are intended to inspire. And that if you don't have the ingredients um, specific to the recipe that you allow yourselves creativity and adaptability and versatility and that you can switch out ingredients for what you have, for what you don't have. So the intention behind the recipes is really to inspire um, and to inspire creativity. So um, also the recipes are intended to illustrate the qualities that are specific to summer and um, to antidote them, in fact. So here we have um, 10 pairs of qualities. And if you can think about these qualities as a spectrum. So what we're looking for when we look at weight, meaning heavy or light, um, look at it like a spectrum. We're not looking for something that's only heavy or only light. We're looking for a balance between the two compared to our situation around us. In terms of temperature, when we are in summer and it's hot, we're not looking for things that come out of the freezer like ice cream, but we're looking for something that's going to be cooling without shocking or being extreme. So look at these um, pairs as uh, continuums to look for a balance and that we need to apply the opposite, which is one of the um, Ayurvedic um, mantras, if you will, and I'm going to quickly go there. Um, one of the Ayurvedic mantras, and I have a couple of them, is um, these are universal mantras as well. I call them mantras because they're, um, they're things that we can repeat to ourselves. The first one is like increases like and opposites 
balance, which means if it's hot outside, naturally, intuitively, we go for something that balances it. And if we go for the um, same thing, for example, it's super hot out, let's say it's um, 35 degrees, and we go for a hot chili pepper or um, alcohol or um, something that's really hot and spicy, I think a lot about spices, that's only going to increase the heat in my body. And what I'm looking to do is to balance that, to bring down the heat so that I can better um, navigate or better, I can feel more comfortable, let's say. So I want to apply the opposite. And that's where we use these pairs of qualities. So let's go back here. If you were look at, to look at this, um, this list of 10 pairs, which ones for you, um, which ones speak to you in terms of when you think about or when you feel the qualities of summer? So just take a moment and have a look. Not all of them apply to food, but all of them can be um, applied to our physical sensations or experience. So just have a look, maybe take some notes if you want. Is summer heavy or light? Is it uh, solid or is it liquid? Is it clear or cloudy? We can even compare summer to spring. We would say that spring is more sticky or cloudy, whereas summer is clear. Is summer um, quick or is it slow? Meaning what is the energy like of summer compared to let's say winter, which can be a slow time of year with the weather, the snow, the cold. Summer's more quick. So let's look now at um, what summer feels like. And this is how Ayurveda describes it, that the qualities of summer would be hot. I think we all agree. Light, which also can mean bright, especially in terms of an individual who is pitta in nature, which means um, the organizing principle of transformation based on the elements of fire and water. These individuals are often sensitive to bright light. So here light means um, light in terms of weight, but also light in terms of luminosity. So often um, individuals with an imbalance of hot, um, they feel also um, sensitivities towards light, like the sunlight. They need to wear sunglasses when they go out. Summer is also very sharp, intense, and penetrating. Think of the rays of the sun or being out in the sunshine um, at, when the sun is at its zenith around 12 or 1 o'clock. The weather or the hot, the heat, the sun can be really sharp and intense. Ayurveda would also say that um, the quality of summer is spreading. There's this um, um, quick energy that spreads. And you can think about this in terms of like a heat rash. Um, rashes in the body often manifest when there's an excess of heat in the summer and they spread like wildfire. So that's kind of an example of spreading quality. Summer is also considered to be oily in terms of, um, of what we feel inside or what we feel on the skin. And this can also manifest like um, with diarrhea. Diarrhea is oily compared to um, what our elimination might be in the fall, which is a dry season of the year where we might tend to have more constipation. Whereas individuals who are sensitive to this oily quality um, could have more of a bile flow in the summer and have more tendencies towards diarrhea. And then um, depending on where you are and what you're like, not what you like, but what you are like, summer can be slightly drying or slightly moistening. And that could seem kind of contrary to oily, but we're just going to keep it separate for the moment. But um, this will be important in terms of how you apply the opposite to balance. So if you're in an area like a, where I grew up in America, in the Midwest, our summers were really humid and hot. So I always felt like I was sweaty and sticky. Um, so I wanted to apply things that were more or eat foods that were more drying. But in um, um, a very hot place in the summer where there's no water, no rivers, no lakes, no ocean, summer can be more drying. So I want to eat things that are more moistening. Hopefully this makes sense for everybody. 
So we'll use these mantras as we go, like increases like, opposites balance. And then other mantras would be, um, it depends. Like I just gave you the example um, of that quality of moistness or dryness. It really depends. It depends on who you are. It depends on what your situation is in terms of health, but it also depends on where you are. So we can use this mantra um, very often. Um, often people ask me, well, should I do this or should I do that? Or Ayurveda says this, or someone tells me that. We can just reply, well, it depends. So we have to take um, every situation into consideration. Um, Ayurveda is an art of living that is oriented in space and in time. So it's always changing. So it depends. So we need to really work with what is present at the moment. So the next mantra would be everything is condition conditional and situational, kind of um, the same thing. And then the one um, thing that I really like um, to use in terms of um, Ayurveda is really one size does not fit all. Um, this doesn't exist um, in reality. Um, Ayurveda doesn't um, say that one size um, fits all. So we need to um, keep that in mind as we go along. Okay, stopping the share. How's everyone doing okay? Questions so far? No? Okay, good, good, good. So um, we're gonna talk quickly then about um, these qualities of summer. And um, just a brief overview um, of a couple um, terms in terms of um, Ayurvedic theory. So we have um, types or typologies, otherwise known as constitution. And um, the constitution um, controls or organizes our individual, but it also organizes nature. And we are in the midst of starting or already in the middle of Pitta season. And Pitta is the word that we use for the organizing principle made up of fire and water. It's mainly fire, about 80%, and water, about 20 If we didn't have that water element, we would probably all combust. So the water is um, important. And think about this if it doesn't really make sense to you. Um, think about stomach acid, which is hot but it's also in a watery environment. And if it didn't have the water, we'd burn up. Um, we'd burn through everything we eat. Um, we um, wouldn't have any moisture. So um, if it, um, it helps, think about the water with fire or water and fire for the Pitta constitution. And so when I talk about Pitta, I'm also talking about um, the Pitta individual, but also the Pitta season, which is now. So individuals with this constitution, and if you aren't sure of what your constitution is, I um, recommend that you, first of all, um, do an, a quiz. There are plenty of online quizzes, and there's one um, by Banyan Botanicals. You have the reference at the bottom, or at the very end of your recipe booklet. And they have a very nice interactive test, which is a first step in understanding what your constitution is. And then this will help you um, make choices as you go along. Um, but the real way of under, or finding out what our constitution is is seeing an Ayurvedic practitioner or an Ayurvedic doctor who will read the pulse at the wrist. And this will give you um, information in terms of what your type is. However, um, the real understanding of who you are, because we all want to know when we um, study Ayurveda or another system, what we are. Um, we want to understand so that we can make better choices. We also are very curious. Um, but the real understanding in terms of Ayurveda is not what someone else tells us, is not what a doctor is going to tell us by reading our pulse. That information is helpful for us in understanding who we are. So the idea is that we use the tools of Ayurveda, we use um, the guidelines, we use um, the wisdom to really understand who we are, what we are in terms of constitution and how everything is changing, constantly changing. The one thing that won't change though is your um, constitution, your natal constitution, what you were conceived with, what you came into the world with. And then um, understanding that is really a baseline so that um, you can always have a place of coming back to a place of return. Because in this world of conditions where everything is constantly changing, 
we go in and out of balance. But really what's important is that we know what our baseline is so we have a place to come back to. We have to know um, first and foremost, and this is really important with summer, do you tend to be too hot or too cold? Are you always cold no matter what the season is? Or do you always run a little hot? And this is really important because that continuum of temperature of hot and cold is really important in the summer because even though Ayurveda says, first of all, eat for the season, second of all, eat for your constitution, you need to know, first of all, are you more hot or are you more cold? And this will help determine the intensity of heat that you're going to apply during the summer. If you're someone that is um, always cold, no matter what the season, and that cold gets exacerbated as you go into the autumn and into the winter, then you need to really be careful about how much cooling, refreshing foods that you add into your diet in the summer. So that's important. One of the most important um, qualities to understand is your temperature and how you run. So let's come back to um, this Pitta idea or um, the principle of transformation. So um, what this means for everybody in general is that you're gonna be effect affected by the season. No matter whether your constitution is vata, which is air and space, or kapha, which is um, based on the elements of earth and water, or if you're pitta, um, we're all going to be influenced by whatever surrounds us. So summer's going to have an effect on us. So everybody needs to um, put into practice this application of opposites to bring balance. But uh, afterwards, what degree that you apply is very individual. But some, and the, the constitution that really needs to pay attention then in the summer is a pitta individual. Because if we use that mantra, like increases like. The individuals who are pitta by nature tend to run more hot, um, tend to be more sharp in terms of the way they talk, the way they think, the way they react, um, tend to have more problems with skin, um, sensitive with the eyes, um, and, and the list goes on. Um, they need to be really careful in terms of summer because summer is their season where they shine or where they go flat like, um, like a tire. So we need to really um, pay attention when it's our season and we want to do things that will help us to continue and shine rather than to go into a state of imbalance. Because um, Ayurveda would say that it's easier to treat um, uh, an imbalance that comes from um, another influence, let's say, for me, it might be easier to, um, to balance another quality because it's not a quality associated with pitta. Um, that would be easier to balance than balancing um, a hot or heat problem with me because it's more like what I'm like, more um, inherent in my constitution. We'll talk about that more later. So one, one thing to be careful of in the summer is that um, we need to pay attention during the pitta time of day, which is between um, two periods. So um, the Ayurvedic, um, Ayur Ayurveda breaks up the day into periods of four. So there are two times periods of four for each of the doshas, which means that um, during those four hours of time, that constitution is going to dominate or is going to be uh, more present. And so we need to pay attention to what we do at that time of day. So pitta hours are during the uh, middle of the day, let's say. So between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. with some uh, flexibility. It's not that when the clock comes 10 o'clock, oh, it's time, it's pitta time. It's a little more, um, um, a little more blurry than that. It's not that um, sharp. Um, but what that means is that um, something very basic is that we try to avoid being in the sunshine between 10 and 2, which is going to actually aggravate any pitta that you may have as an individual, whether pitta may be your constitution or not. And so when I see people of fair skin like me, um, I can tell that they're a pitta individual. And here they are in the middle of summer running in the hot sun. I'm just saying, oh, mamma mia. 
they aren't listening to themselves. This is really counter to nature. So what Ayurveda teaches is to um, really be more in tune with who we are and respect that and do things that bring us balance rather than take us out of balance. So pay attention between 10 and two and also between same hours, 12 hours later. So 10 at night to two in the morning, which means, um, and this is what happens for uh, many Pitta individuals who um, are often more in the head than in the body, um, um, intellectual planners, um, controllers, um, liking um, information, so thirsty and juicy for information. They love to read, they love to ins inform themselves, often teachers. Um, so what happens is that around 9, 9.30, 10 at night, they pick up a book, they open up the computer, they start to read, they start to activate um, all this energy and heat going up. And what happens, they get their second wind. So here they are up again and enjoying those fiery hours when they're supposed to be sleeping. So that's um, another time where we need to be careful and start to wind our activities down around seven, eight at night stopping screens, stopping all the movement that goes upward. Because what's really important um, with um, this, um, this um, energy of transformation or this energy of fire is that we need to keep the fire contained. We need to keep it where it's supposed to be. Too much rising fire creates problems. Migraine headaches, um, dry eyes, um, irritability, rashes, too much heat going up. So we need to contain the heat. And that's why in the summer we favor um, foods that are juicy, which have the water and earth element that bring us down. Also astringent qualities, bitter qualities that are more um, drying and more um, cooling. And we'll talk about that a little more later. So um, paying attention um, to the on times for Pitta, which would mean be between 10 and two, both during the day and at night. Okay, so we'll talk more about those um, um, opposites a little later on. I think it's time for a recipe. So hopefully everyone will agree. So if you have um, your recipe book um, accessible on your screen or if, if you printed it, otherwise I'll put it on the screen for us. Um, maybe I should um, check in first of all, I'm going to stop the screen share. Um, maybe with the show of hands, you can let me know um, how many of you are actually going to do the recipes. How many of you bought the ingredients and you're going to follow along in the kitchen? Okay, there are two people. Okay. Um, no more than that? No? Okay. Um, well, there are two people or three people who aren't um, online so or on the screen, so um, we'll, um, we'll go with the flow. All right. So these are the recipes I have in store for us today. We'll see how many we get through. And um, again, um, all the recipes are versatile, adaptable, and I'll talk about as we go along different things that you can switch out if you don't have, or if you're vegan and you don't eat yogurt, I'll give you some vegan um, possibilities as well. So everything's um, without gluten, so gluten-free, and there's only a one recipe that does have um, milk products in it. And if we have time, um, I'll add in these extras, otherwise you'll have the recipes for um, a later time. So the first recipe I'd like to try with you is, um, the coconut chia pudding. And so for this recipe, and I'll um, show you as we go. So for those of you who want to um, do the recipe as we go, feel free to um, hop on into the kitchen. Um, this is a, what I like about this recipe is that it doesn't require any cooking. And that's one of the things we, um, we want to uh, diminish in the summer is the cooking, the heat that we create in the kitchen because like increases like. And also um, we could maybe even think that summer is like a no cook season. However, when we think about non-cooking, all of a sudden people run to raw foods. And uh, Ayurveda and also like um, other um, Eastern traditions isn't really for too much raw. That says raw has its place, 
um, in certain quanti quantities and also at certain times of the day. But the idea is that even though it's hot outside, we continue to eat cooked food. But here's one exception. This is a raw recipe and it calls for coconut milk that you can buy in a can or you can even make yourself. Um, it's really easy to make um, coconut milk um, either from a fresh um, uh, coconut or a mature coconut that's brown on the outside or by buying um, dried coconut that you put in hot water and that you mix with a blender and then filter um, what you've mixed through a fine um, strainer or like a cheesecloth and then you get coconut milk. Super easy to make. Um, the, it, the, the recipe would be one part of dried coconut for one part of hot water. So if you want to make a cup of coconut milk, you would need a cup of coconut flakes, dried coconut flakes, and a cup of boiling water that you pour over the top. You let it sit for about um, 10, 15 minutes. Then you blend it up and filter and you'll get your coconut milk. So um, coconut milk and chia seeds. Now chia seeds um, come from um, South America and I'm um, making some exceptions to eating local. Um, Ayurveda really um, touts eating local as much as possible. Um, but local can also mean, it doesn't have to mean within 50 kilometers from where you live. It can also mean coming from a region in the world where the um, climate is very similar to where you are at present. So that also can be called local. Sometimes people lo think local is just really what's around us. So we need to expand our um, definition of what local is. And that said, um, it's really, um, in, my, in my opinion, the local is really about what's um, fresh in terms of like vegetables and fruit. Of course, we're always going to need to bring things from elsewhere in terms of like coffee, tea, sugar, um, grains and things like that. Does, that doesn't always grow locally. So anyways, these chia seeds, um, according to um, holistic medicine, are very beneficial for hydrating the body. They're very rich in omega-3 fatty acids. And they, when they um, are rehydrated, they give um, a mucilaginous quality, which helps bowels become soft. So people with constipation um, could use these. Also, they really help with hydration and lubrification. So this lubrification um, is really important in the summer because if our um, inside is dry, we can drink all the water that we want, but we won't absorb it. That's why, that's why a lot of people who are dehydrated and are dry on the inside say, well, I drink two liters of water and I still have dry skin and I'm still constipated. It's because the inside, our, um, our organism inside is too dry. So using chia seeds, flax seeds, is a great way of um, creating um, this lubrification that we need on the inside. But it's really important that you rehydrate them or you grind them up and mix them into a food that's cooked. If you just eat them like this, um, they're going to be very difficult to digest. Um, the recipe also calls for a liquid natural sweetener, but this is optional because we're using this coconut milk that's already sweet in nature. So really um, the sweetener is optional. Today I'd like to use um, some maple syrup um, just because um, I'm of American origin and it's local for me coming from Canada, but I live in France. <laughs> um, when I say in the recipe, preferably not honey for the summer, it's because out of all the sweeteners, honey is the most heating. And so that's why Ayurveda would recommend not using honey during the hot months of the year. Use it any other time of the year, but preferably not in summer. But mind you, if you only have honey at home, um, know that the recipe in and of itself is very cooling. So a little bit of honey is not going to be that um, detrimental. And um, as I'm going here, I'd like to um, just weave in some um, Ayurvedic wisdom in terms of honey and its use. Um, according to Ayurveda, we never heat honey. Heating honey um, changes its properties. Um, normally honey is a, a medicine or an alicament. It's a medicinal food and it's taken raw. 
However, when you heat it and it goes, um, um, it gets hot, it, it transforms into a sticky toxic substance that can cling on to our mucous membranes, creating um, obstruction in our channels. Maybe this is more information that you want to know, but I think it's good to know that um, honey is really best used raw, unheated, and in foods that aren't too hot. So if you want to put it in a tea, um, just take your little finger and dip it into your cup. If you don't burn your finger, then it's um, okay for putting honey in your, um, in your beverage. Okay, so um, going on, um, I also like to use a little bit of vanilla extract in this recipe, or if you don't have vanilla and want to use an essential oil, um, essential oils fit really well into this uh, recipe. Lemon, lime, anything that's more of the um, citrus family. Mint is especially cooling and would make a good addition. Um, also, ylang-ylang, that um, wonderful sensual flower. It's very surprising in desserts. Um, if you have um, some ylang-ylang essential oil and want to add it to a cake, um, like a dessert, or especially like cream desserts, it's particularly um, surprising. And then we're going to also use a little bit of grated fresh ginger root. And um, that's going to help with the digestibility of coconut, um, which is one of the world's most cooling and hydrating foods. It's very oily and heavy and dense. So we're gonna lighten it up a little bit with um, ginger. And you might say, well, ginger, isn't ginger heating? Well, if you look at that spectrum of um, temperature, hot and cold, um, we have hot, 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 like hot cha cha hilly, chili peppers. And we have cold, 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 like ice cream or ice cubes. But then you have things that are in the middle. So um, Ayurveda would put ginger more towards warming, not so much towards hot cha cha heating. That said, it's fresh grated ginger root that would be more warming. However, if you use dry ginger, it's going to be more heating, so more towards the hot. So pit to individuals or in the summer, it's better to use freshly grated ginger if you want to use ginger in your cooking. Okay, so um, let's do this recipe together or for those of you who are just watching, um, have a look. So I've, I have here my um, coconut milk and depending on what kind of coconut milk you have, um, I chose um, a coconut milk that's called cooking coconut um, milk. So I think it's a little different than um, a coconut milk you fi might find in a can, but um, because coconut has become very much um, stylish, you'll find it in different forms. But you want to, um, depending on the thickness of it, you might need to dilute it with a little bit of water. Now, for those of you who don't want to use coconut milk, um, because maybe um, it comes from too far away, or you don't like the taste, um, you could substitute the coconut milk with a non-dairy milk, a dairy milk if you digest it, fruit juice, um, a little bit diluted, or even coconut water, the water that comes from the young coconut, which is the one of the world's most cooling foods. And so this recipe is quite simple. We're just going to put all the liquid ingredients together. So I'm going to put my um, maple syrup and you put whatever um, whatever you've chosen. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of essential oil of vanilla and it's best when you use essential oils on the inside to put them in a liquid medium before adding them to other things and maybe taste before you add more because um, just one or two drops can be um, quite potent. And do ensure that they're organic um, essential oils because um, we don't want to um, put any poisons in our body. So I'm going to get the maple syrup out. And then um, you could also use um, a sweetener that's um, powdered like a, a muscovado, siconet, rapadura, um, natural um, brown sugar. You could use that as well because it's in a, a liquid form and it's going to, um, or the, the, the coconut milk would help to dissolve it. And then I'll put in my um, freshly grated ginger root. And I'm going to put a little cardamom in today because cardamom is my favorite spice. And it's a spice that's not um, overly heating. It's a little warming, but it's really helpful um, for digestion. 
Um, and we'll talk more about um, qualities with spices. I'm not going to measure it out. I'm going to do it by um, intuition or what, um, what comes. And I want to mention in passing that um, in all these recipes um, that I'm going to share with you today, it's not like we're making a souffle. Um, if you don't get the quantities right, or if you don't have enough, doesn't matter. You're not going to um, you're not going to ruin the recipe. So um, feel free to adapt uh, and adjust with what you have and what um, comes from the inside. What what you think is going to work. So um, super easy recipe. I'm going to mix this all together with a little um, with a whisk, and then add my chia seeds, whole chia seeds. You don't need to grind them for this recipe. The idea with the chia seeds is that as soon as they hit water or something liquid, they're gonna to start to clump together. So either with a whisk or a fork, it's a good idea to um, move right away. So this is the quintessential dessert for summer um, because it's no nonsense and you don't have to cook it. Um, not, it's not like rocket, rocket science. You don't need a lot of special preparation. You just whip it up like this and then um, put it in a jar or put it in your serving bowl straight away. And then you need to put it in the refrigerator or let it sit for at least a half an hour before you consume it and because the chia seeds need to do their job, which means that they need to um, get all, um, um, they need to rehydrate. So they're going to, begin, they're going to become mucilaginous and gelatinous. And so it's going to create this thick pudding, which doesn't look thick right now, but um, you'll see it's going to do its work. So I'm just gonna um, slide this in my refrigerator and um, when I'm ready for um, a refreshing treat, um, whether it be dessert or um, in the afternoon, the idea is that if you've had it in the fridge, um, one of the um, wise ideas before using it would be to um, take it out of the refrigerator at least a half an hour or an hour before you're going to eat it. Because one thing that really douses our digestive fire and what Ayurveda would be against is eating foods directly out of the fridge. Even though that's maybe what we're feeling like when it's really hot outside and our body just wants to cool down and we think that, oh, ice cream or something icy cold, ice cubes or something directly out of the fridge is going to be the perfect medicine because it's the opposite. But actually things that are too cold are going to douse our our digestive fire. Why? Because the body is going to take more energy to heat up what isn't already heated. And I'm not talking about that you have to heat it over the fire, but um, something that's not similar to our body temperature is going to take more energy for our body to digest, which for example, if we drink things straight out of the fridge, what happens? We get an instant headache. All of a sudden we feel cold, but it's a cold that depletes us, meaning that the energy normally that's supposed to be expansive is going to all go to the center of the body to help our digestive fire. And what's gonna happen, we're gonna feel all of a sudden we have no energy, we have cold hands, cold feet. So it's really important never even in any season to eat things directly out of the refrigerator. Best to take them out, let them come to room temperature. So here we have our pudding. And I'm already seeing that um, it's a little too thick. So personally, I'm going to add some more water. Um, you could also add um, something like um, rose water or orange flower blossom water um, for more of a, um, a exotic taste. And also those are um, cooling substances, rose water, orange flower blossom water, um, hydrosols or um, yeah, hydrosols is what I think what you call them, and would also be good in this recipe. So um, another reason why this recipe would be um, quintessential is that the way that um, we've made it this morning is that there um, are no dairy products in it. And one of the food combining guidelines, according to Ayurveda, food guidelines or food combining is really important in terms of our digestion, um, is not to mix dairy with other things. Um, and so this would be a good dessert. Um, also, there's no fruit in it. Yes, coconut's a fruit, but it's not like eating a raw apricot or um, a peach at the end of the meal. Ayurveda suggests um, that we separate our fruits from other foods. 
Fruits are very easy to digest, full of sugar, um, good sugar, um, and water, which when there's nothing being digested, they digest very easily. However, when there's something already being digested, everything that was starting to be digested is going to be put aside for our organism to digest what's easy, what's, um, what's very easy to digest, which would be fruits. And what's going to happen to everything that was, was put aside? Well, it's slowly going to ferment. And we're going to create this wine on the inside, which um, totally changes our intestinal flora, creating an acidic environment and also slowing down our digestive process for then creating all kinds of problems along the line. So if you really want to preserve your digestive fire and the strength of it, one food combining rule that everyone can easily apply is keep your fruits separate from everything else. And this is especially true in the summer with melon, whether it be watermelon or cantaloupe or yellow melon, green melon. There's um, a saying in, um, in English, um, um, eat it alone or leave it alone. Eat it alone or leave it alone. This is especially true for um, melons in the summer. So keep that one in mind. But um, that said, um, we have to um, keep um, kind of the spirit of summer. And if you're Italian living in Italy, um, melon with a piece of uh, Parma ham is delicious. Or if you're living in France and you put a little port wine in your, um, in your melon, it's delicious. Um, so those could be considered as exceptions and that um, exceptions are okay especially if you're eating it in a spirit of relaxation, you're with friends, you're in good company. And in those kind of situations, our digestion or our body is relaxed. So that means we're going to digest better. When there's tension around eating, um, whether it be family tension, um, stressful conversations, um, stress around, um, oh, I shouldn't be eating this, or Ayurveda says, don't do this, then you create this tension that's going to create um, more difficulty than if you were just to say, okay, here I am, I'm out on a terrace, it's summer, this is something I really enjoy. Will you enjoy it while it's in season? Or you enjoy it from time to time? But when these um, exceptions become daily habits, it's, that's when problems start. It's when that um, milk in your coffee um, like a cappuccino, which could be delicious when you're on vacation in Italy. I don't know why Italy keeps coming up, but um, um, that comes to mind. A cappuccino could be good, but Ayurveda would consider um, mixing dairy milk with coffee really difficult for digestion. And okay from time to time, but on a daily basis would really um, wreak havoc in our system. Okay, um, there's more I can share, but I'm gonna stop there um, in terms of this recipe. Do you have any questions concerning um, this coconut chia pudding, which is kind of a modern twist on tapioca pudding? Julia, go ahead. Hi, Michelle. Um, Hi, welcome back. Hi. Thank you. Um, I noticed there's a question in the chat regarding the use of essential oils. Yes. And um, because I'm, uh, I know a lot about the essential oil world myself. Um, and I think because you live in France and come from America, you maybe are not aware that in the UK, the Aromatherapy Council here, which governs uh, the body, all of the bodies, it is actually prohibited to use essential oils internally. Wow. Uh, reason for that is that um, especially coming out of America um, there has been some quite dangerous situations arise because people don't realize that essential oils a are very concentrated and b they don't dissolve in water so recommendations of putting essential oils I'm not saying you're doing it here putting them into water or into yogurt stirring it around and eating it can actually be dangerous because it damages the mucous membranes. Yes. So of course, in France, doctors recommend internal use of essential oils under, you know, kind of very strict criteria. But I must say, 
um, having researched this subject quite well and knowing the dangers of it, I myself do not advocate it mm -hmm. because not because it's not possible, but because it can go wrong um, in terms of that. So I'm sorry to. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. But, it's but, that, certainly, um... but certainly that's the situation in the UK and in America, I think it's really gone to a kind of bad extreme, actually, in terms yeah. of the use. But I agree with you. Thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate okay. it. Um, it. It's true that it's it's good to um, to say those kinds of things, and I um, I didn't um, think about that. Um, so it's good that you brought it up. But it's true that um, we can take things to extremes or do things erroneously if we don't know. Um, but it's true that um, I tend to um, use essential oils eternally when, um, especially um, um, foods that um, are essential oils that come from food. For example, um, like citrus comes from the citrus peel and it's not citrus juice or um, what else like ginger or um, mint, um, lavender, which to me seem like safe oils, but it's always um, in something that's diluted and always small quantities. And it's true that it's not really something I advocate, but I, I'm kind of in passing here. Um, I shared it today and I also kind of use it or I would recommend using it if I didn't have lemon or lime at home and I wanted that um, that taste or if um, if I were um, an individual for whom it wouldn't be right to have um, uh, for example not right but if um, my organism was too acidic and it would be best for me to avoid eating citrus foods like um, lime juice lemon juice but I still wanted that taste I could put one drop of lemon um, essential oil in a preparation that um, wouldn't be too harmful so um, that's just that's kind of my approach but um, I really appreciate everything you shared and I'm in total agreement okay yeah no well it is it's just it's just a bit contrary in the UK because it's kind of prohibited yeah, yeah. and also that's it's good to know yeah, and it's also the dilution you use because if you put essential oil in a watery substance, it doesn't dissolve. It That's remains. Right. So yeah, it's just anyway. I thought um, I, I didn't think you were aware of the situation in yes. the UK because you don't live here. I, I didn't. I didn't know. So thank you for sharing. That's okay. good information to know. Okay. Okay. Um, I just need um, a moment to um, switch um, for the next recipe. One moment. I also need to plug my computer in. Okay. Good, good. Okay. So now I just want to make sure I um, said everything I wanted to say. Um, I think so. Okay. Good, good. Um, so where are we? Okay, let's talk um, for a moment about um, digestion, about agni, which is um, this digestive fire. And I'm going to go back to the screen share. So again, you'll have um, this set of slides at the end and so that um, you'll get everything that wasn't there originally. Um, okay, agni, our digestive fire. So, um, as we look at this um, or talk about Agni, um, I want to show you um, this chart that my um, colleague and mentor Amadea Morningstar, um, who is, um, lives in New Mexico and has some really good um, books. Um, you can go to her website. It's at the end of, my, um, of this um, recipe booklet. And um, she um, put this together um, in terms of the rhythm of, first of all, our doshas and how the doshas um, increase and decrease according to the season. So you can look at um, pitta and how um, pitta in pink um, goes up as starting in April and peaks in June, July, and then starts to go down. But notice, even though there are very many similarities to pitta, the fire element, um, and um, 
this principle of transformation. And Agni, which is our digestive fire, very similar qualities when you describe fire, you can describe fire as hot, it's light, it's sharp, it um, can have an oily quality to it as well. For example, if you put um, um, oil on a fire, the flames are gonna go up. So all of these qualities that describe a Pitta individual or the Pitta season are also very similar to Agni. But how is it then that um, in the summer, when Pitta is high, that Agni is low? Well, um, the theory behind this is that um, when it's hot outside, our bodies are adapting to that heat, which means that the energy normally that's um, coming um, towards the center gets spread out. It disperses. It goes um, to the exterior or towards our limbs, our hands, our feet to keep the body cool. It's kind of like our air conditioning is turned on, which means that the energy, um, more the energy that's normally used for digestion has been sent elsewhere, which means our digestive fire is much lower in the hot seasons of the year. Just wanna make sure that everyone's on mute. I'm, I'm hearing uh, some sounds in the background. It just be better for the, um, for the recording. So this is why um, in the summer, um, it's a delicate time of our digestion. And this is why we need to favor foods that are easy to digest, um, food, um, really simple preparations, unfussy, uncomplicated. And um, this will really help with our digestion because the more complex our food is, the harder it is to digest. And although we may not um, be drawn to um, big meals, um, we could favor um, smaller meals. But the idea is to not skip a meal. And why? Because um, if we skip a meal, it's going to um, create difficulties for our digestion. Um, granted, you may not be super hungry, but eating or drinking something like a liquid soup um, would be beneficial rather than totally skipping a meal. Um, when we talk about um, these um, foods that are easy to digest, we're really talking about food that is sattvic. In Ayurveda, we talk about three major um, or maha qualities, maha gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas. And basically, sattva or sattvic qualities are qualities that create a, an energy of satisfaction of illumination, of clarity, of harmony. And this is in general what we want to look for in our food choices, foods that are easy to digest, easy on our digestion, easy on our system, that create clarity, that create lightness, so that we can have ease in our bodies, but also ease in our minds, especially for people who have meditation practices. We don't want to have a, a mind that's jumping all over the place, rajasic, or that's too tamasic where we fall asleep all the time where we feel heavy. So um, a sattvic diet is important. Um, and so favoring foods that are light and clear and easy to digest, especially in the summer will be important. So what we want to do in all of this is we want to keep our inner fire happy. We don't wanna to create too many digestive wars or confusion or complication with things that are too um, difficult to digest, too many, um, mm, too many choices or too many things on our plate. Um, and this is especially true with food combining. And um, in the spring, I shared a, a food combining um, a handout and I can send that um, out as well. Um, and a little bit of information, an article written by my, um, my teacher, Dr. Vasant Lad, um, talks a lot about food combining. And this is something that um, I encourage everyone to try on for size, to see if it works. Because when we, um, combine foods in the right way, and we keep our digestive fire happy. Another thing um, in terms of um, keeping our digestive fire happy or um, better digestion in the summer is to um, eat what's in season. And um, when, we talk about, um, when we talk about that, um, it's really um, around this principle of, of um, changing the food with the weather really helps um, keep us well. So um, 
This is based on the idea that in the soil, there are microorganisms that change according to the season. And if we eat the foods that are in season, these microorganisms are going to support our intestines. So um, we're going to get more um, good bacteria in our intestines if we eat in season and eat what's local. And this bacteria in our intestines is what keeps our immunity going strong. And um, you all know that we really need to pay attention to our immunity in our times with viruses and sicknesses going around. So a strong immunity will be the best vaccination for all of us. Um, also, what's going to help with um, our digestion is to eat foods in their whole form, which doesn't mean we're just going to um, take a carrot and eat it like that. Whole form would mean um, we take a food that we bought ourselves, that we transform it ourselves. We haven't bought a carrot that's already been cut up, or already been grated, or already um, been frozen or canned, um, unless those are... Um, um, you know, we're in a hurry and we don't have time, but the idea is to really benefit from this time of the year. That's really the abundant time of year for things that are fresh and in season to really um, enjoy. So transforming them ourselves is really important. That's going to help with digestive fire. Um, also, um, often more important than the actual food itself is when we eat it. I'm going to share with you some cooling foods today. Um, one cooling food is um, dairy products and summer is really the um, best time of the year for those of you who eat dairy. Um, dairy is good, um, especially sweet dairy. What can be a little bit problematic is um, too much fermented dairy, but it's not um, forbidden. Um, but the idea is that we have that during um, the day rather than at night, because dairy at night, um, especially fermented dairy, is um, very difficult for our digestion. It slows down the digestion and can create mucus and um, other complications, especially for blocking our subtle channels. And so those of you who are doing subtle practices, we wanna keep our channels open. So yogurt at night is not a good idea. Yogurt during the day, yes, but not at night. So often timing more important than the food is really important. And we'll talk more about that um, later. Um, it's a good idea in the summer to optimize the cool hours of the day to prepare your food. So if you get up early, you can cook for the day. You can cook all your dishes for the day and eat them um, when the meal time comes. That way you're not in the kitchen um, with the oven on and cooking up a storm when it's really hot outside. Um, also have things on hand to snack on or to have smaller meals um, when your hunger hits unexpectedly. And the reason I say this is we may not always be hungry at meal times um, when the heat is out there. Um, our rhythms get a little shifted. We might feel more like um, having a brunch around 11 before it gets too hot out and then having dinner um, when the sun goes down and is a little cooler out. Um, and in between time, we might feel like a small meal. And um, what's good for pitta individuals is to plan ahead because um, pitta individuals, and I'm speaking from my experience, and this maybe not pertains to you, but maybe someone of your family, is that when they're hungry and there's nothing around, they become voracious or they have pitta style emotions that pop up. They get impatient and angry and um, frustrated. So it's really important to have um, good, healthy snacks uh, or small meals that are um, ready to go. For example, you could cook a pot of grains in the morning and then use it in different ways throughout the day. Um, you could also um, sprout lentils, um, Ayurveda loves mung beans, these green, um, sometimes they're called green so soybeans, but they're not soybeans, they're called green mung. And they're one of the easiest um, legumes to sprout. I started this um, only 48 hours ago, and now my sprouts are nice and happy. And sprouting, um, eating sprouts in the summer is the best time of year to eat. These, um, they can be eaten raw, they can be eaten cooked, but the sprouting helps their digestibility, especially for legumes, which can be um, difficult on digestion because of their astringent nature. And we'll talk more about what that means. But um, the protein content becomes more available 
when um, foods like this are sprouted. So these are great additions to a salad, to a soup, um, to grains, uh, rice, um, to, to other beans. Um, you can also mix them up, cook them, mix them up and make a hummus. So it'd be different from chickpeas. Mung beans are much easier to digest. And according to Ayurveda, they're one of the world's most cooling foods and um, also a food that um, helps the body to detox. Um, really a magical bean, if you want. And um, um, let's talk about some of those cooling foods. I'll share the screen again. Um, oh. And one last thing in terms of, um, of um, what, what I'm going to share with you today in terms of recipes is that um, we're not going to really be cooking anything. I'm giving you more um, like condiments, sauces, um, um, things that you can accompany um, something that's already um, a main dish is what I want to say. So I'm not going to offer um, today any uh, major recipes where we're spending a lot of time cooking. Your cooking can stay really simple in the summer. Steamed vegetables, uh, rice, or um, some kind of grain, and some kind of protein, whether it's animal protein or vegetable protein, and just keep the preparation really simple. That'll keep you out of the kitchen and enjoying nature or enjoying what you like to enjoy in the summer. And then using the recipes I'm, I'm sharing with you today in order to um, kind of um, be add-ons or make your meals more lively. So um, I wanted to talk about the cooling foods, this list that I prepared for you. Um, Ayurveda would, and yeah, Ayurveda would um, consider that these foods are juicy, rehydrating, and especially cooling in nature. So we have cilantro, um, which is one of the most cooling foods ever. I'm going to make um, later with you um, a chutney that has a sauce that has this, um, this in it. It's um, often used like in Mexican cooking when you eat a dish that's way too hot then there's cilantro on the side to cool you down. So know that it's an antidote for any spicy food. Um, cucumbers, juicy, watery, um, very cooling. Zucchini along the same line, same family. Fennel bulb. Now there's, the next recipe I wanna make is with um, fennel bulb. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find it. I didn't think it would be that difficult. Maybe in France, it's only a spring vegetable, but in other parts of the world, it could be um, more of a summer, but also a cooling food. Um, not only the bulb, but also the spice. Um, Ayurveda considers um, fennel seed to be the most sattvic of spices. Any kind of leafy greens, um, hibiscus, mint, all the mints, rose, coconut, um, sweet and neutral fruits. Um, talking here about cherries, um, berries, um, not the um, acidic berries but, or sour berries, but more the sweet berries, um, like um, blueberries, um, raspberries, um, sweet strawberries. Um, other neutral fruits would be uh, stone fruits, um, apricots, peaches, plums. Um, so sweet fruits, um, melons, watermelon, all those are um, going to be um, considered to be sweet fruits. Um, avocado, um, some people consider it a fruit. Some people consider it a vegetable. It's one of those versatile things that can go either way. Very cooling, um, good in, um, in good fats. Um, aloe vera gel or juice, excellent summer, summer time to take internally. Um, and I'm not talking about what comes out of a tube. I'm talking about um, the actual gel that you buy in a bottle. So there's gel and juice, very hydrating, very cooling. Excellent for topical use as well. If you have a, a, a skin rash or a burn, um, you've been out in the sun, you got sunburned, slather um, aloe vera all over your body. Um, bitter salads and greens, um, microgreens, um, any kind of um, like endive, radicchio, um, bitter salad greens are excellent for bringing cooling to the body. Bitter herbs and spices um, are excellent as well. And we'll talk about that more later, some of the um, examples. Cool and light proteins. So one of them would be mung beans, whether they be sprouted or not. Um, um, lentils, um, other light proteins, um, um, animal sources would be like um, the white part of chicken or um, fish, um, fish that come from a lake or um, freshwater fish from rivers. Um, other light um, proteins could be um, um, 
I'm having a blank here. Um, they'll come back to me, but um, tofu, tofu for people who eat tofu. But the one um, big important thing with tofu is never to have it cold. Cold tofu is poison. So please always cook your tofu and please forget anything you see in a natural food store that's been made with tofu that's eaten cold. It's very, um, it's, a, it's a poison for our system. And I'll talk more about that later, but cold soy is really to be avoided. Um, light, light neutral grains, um, basmati rice, Thai rice, um, more of the white rices rather than um, the whole grain rices. The whole grain rice are too heating, too heavy, um, too rough for summer. So more of the lighter grains. Um, quinoa, amaranth um, can be good grains in the summer as well. Um, teff, um, um, what else is there? Um, fonio, those grains that come from Africa, sorghum. Um, those grains can also um, sometimes be a little too drying. So you can mix them um, with rice, for example, like a three-fourths basmati rice and a fourth amaranth or a fourth quantity of quinoa. Um, also a good way of introducing those grains into your diet if you aren't familiar with them. Sweet dairy products are excellent. It's these, the part of the time of the year to have sweet dairy products. Um, that could be um, fresh goat's cheese, fresh sheep's cheese, um, more of the cheeses that are fresh in nature and soft cheeses rather than a Parmesan, which would be more sharp and penetrating. Um, milk, um, things like that, whether it be cow's milk, um, goat's milk, um, sheep's milk, um, just know that um, out of all of the milks, goat's milk is the most astringent, which means would be the lightest milk to digest. Kitchari, what is kitchari? Kitchari is um, the Ayurvedic healing food that's often used in detox programs, but also um, a very um, simple one pot meal based on a grain and a legume. And traditionally it's made with split mung dal and white basmati rice. But know that um, this combination isn't the only combination. You can make any combination of a grain and a bean or a legume and make kitchari, which is all cooked in one pot with all kinds of seasonal vegetables. If you don't know what to cook, you're out of ideas, you don't want to spend time in the kitchen, make a pot of kitchari. You'll do wonders for your digestion. And as I mentioned also, sprouts are excellent um, for the summer because they're cooling and neutral foods. And we'll talk um, more about all of that um, later on. Are there questions? Okay, good, good, yes. Hi. Um, Hi. I just want to say that this is so fascinating. It's not a question, but I'm just enjoying it so much. Oh, good. Um, and it's, yeah, I'm just writing so many notes and loving it, so thank you. Mm, thank you. <laughs> if anybody gets bored, you just let me know. And if um, I get too serious, um, I will um, do something silly for a moment. Um, there. <laughs> and you, can, you can feel free to be silly as well. Um, <laughs> because when we get too serious, then um, things kind of um, um, aren't in fun anymore. So um, <laughs> this one I like as well. <laughs> okay, so what's your question? I'm here. Okay, um, I early on I make that um, uh, pudding. Yes. I only got coconut powder. Okay. But I think the const can I see your consistency because mine's very thick, glory. Is it what's supposed to be? Okay, you can. I uh... use hot coconut powder diluted in hot water. Uh, okay. I don't have the tin. Okay. Um, just a second. I need to get this. Um, <laughs> now I need to get the pig off. How do I do it? I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh no. Does anybody know how I can remove this? You have to keep it on. No. <laughs> Hi, Glenn. <laughs> okay. I'll put something nice on then. How about a 
something that uh, leaves. <laughs> okay, well, I'll um, I'll take care of that at the break. Sorry, I was trying. Uh, none. Here we go. Phew. <laughs> Um, I didn't want to offend anybody. So um, you want to see the consistency? I don't know if you can see. It's supposed to be like a pudding. It's supposed to be quite thick. Quite, quite a lot of liquid. My completely glued together. No, so because you might want to dilute it. You can dilute it with some water. Uh, and back to um, Julia's comment about um, essential oils, um, to be more on the cautious side if someone were wanting to use um, something um, similar, not having the exact oil, would to use hydrosols, like a rose um, water, which is less um, dangerous for the body to in ingest, especially if it's, um, you need to make sure it's organic, but um, rose water or orange um, blossom water or mint water, which is um, the water left over from distillation of essential oils. Um, personally, I, I feel, I don't, maybe Julia, you have an opinion about that too. And maybe in the UK it's different, but um, it's, it, it seems more absorbable by the body than actually using an oil. Yeah, you agree? Good. <laughs> Keep drinking, everybody. <laughs> um, while we're um, before we go on to the next recipe, I just want to um, um, show you something that um, you can do. Maybe something that you um, already do, but um, using fresh um, herbs that you find locally. So yesterday at my growers market, I got some lemon um, verbena, and um, oh, it smells so good. <laughs> And um, I took some of the leaves off and crushed them up and put them in water and put this in my refrigerator. And so I made a cold infusion. And this is a way of um, staying hydrated by drinking um, um, a scented water, if you want. Um, you could do this with mint. Um, you could do this with um, anything that you enjoy um, eating, but it's um, a nice way of um, giving a little taste to water. And just know that in terms of hydration, um, really water is um, the ultimate substance for hydration. Sometimes we need to assist our, um, our hydration by having more oil in our diet. Uh, I know that I mentioned that uh, one of the qualities of summer is oily, and we want to avoid things that are too oily. But um, uh, what I like to um, um, specify here is that that doesn't mean that we have an oil-free diet. It means we avoid things that are fried in oil, uh, too much oil in our cooking, or foods that are too oily um, in nature um, that are kind of swimming in oil. But we need oil to stay lubricated and hydrated. Uh, Ayurveda uses oil externally to help with that, but we can also use oil internally by taking two to three tablespoons of cold pressed, good quality oil on a daily basis. Um, some people just um, down it um, on an empty stomach, which is one way of doing it, but I prefer drizzling it over my food like you would drizzle olive oil over your food. Use flax oil, hemp oil, um, gold of pleasure, which in French is cameline. I don't know what it is um, in other languages. Um, poppy seed oil, um, sunflower seed oil. Um, all of these oils um, are excellent um, to use. Olive oil as well, olive oil is bitter. Um, so um, using these oils directly on your food is a great way of creating more internal lubrification. Let me put this aside. Okay, how about another recipe? Let's go on to the marinated fennel salad. And I think there are about um, three of you that were here um, last session for the spring. And we did um, a recipe, it was a um, grated beet recipe. Well, this is kind of along the same lines. And um, the idea, the reason why I'm doing this with you today, um, it's not that um, it's a, um, a recipe that needs a lot of uh, um, know how to do. It's very simple and straightforward. But I chose it because um, fennel is a very cooling, hydrating food, um, excellent for um, and digestible probably by most. Um, 
But um, the idea is when we um, get to summer and we want uh, to cool down, often people go towards raw foods. And why um, Ayurveda isn't so for raw foods is that um, food that has not been cooked is always going to demand more energy from the body. And if our energy is already low in the summer um, because of the heat, you know, that internal um, um, air conditioning system is trying to keep things cool. So all of the other functions of the body kind of slow down. Um, we don't want to tax our digestion by giving it more work. Um, so we can um, enjoy raw, um, but in certain quantities and not all during the day. For example, in the evening, it's better um, we have foods that are cooked and um, because our digestive fire isn't at its optimum. It's when our outside fire, meaning the sun, is mirroring our inner fire or more our inner fire is mirroring our, the outer fire. So our internal sun is at its zenith at the same time the external sun is at its zenith. So between at those pitta times a day between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., it's the best time of day to favor foods that require a little more energy for digestion. So that could be raw, that could be um, having a dessert. If you're gonna have dessert, best to have it at lunch rather than at dinner to really optimize those natural um, functioning of our digestion. So this um, recipe is an idea of ways to prepare your food in the summer, allowing you to eat raw, but raw that's digestible. So we make a marinade and it's not um, complicated. Um, it's basically oil, um, a good quality oil. It doesn't have to be olive oil, it can be flax, it can be sunflower oil, it can be another oil. Probably not um, best to use coconut oil in this recipe. Um, juice of a lime or a lemon, but just know between the two that lime juice or limes are cooling in nature, whereas yellow limes or yellow lemons, sorry, um, lemons and limes in English. So lime, the green of fruit is cooling. Lemon is heating. And that we're talking here about the energetics, the, the nature of the food, the inherent nature. So in the summer, if you're wanting to use citrus or wanting to have that sour taste, which is important, um, is to favor lime versus lemon. And then salt. Um, and again, salt, not all salts are the same. Um, mineral salt or pink salt, the salt that comes from the Himalayas or other regions of the world, tends to be more cooling in nature compared to sea salt. And um, my Ayurvedic, my first Ayurvedic teacher, Dr. Vasantlad, um, um, he, um, what he teaches about salt is that sea salt can tend to um, retain fluids more than other salts. And I'm not talking about iodized salt. That's something that we should not even have at home unless we're using it for cleaning or something else because all of the minerals and the um, prana has been depleted. So um, using a natural salt and better in the summer to use pink or mineral salt than sea salt in terms of, um, of retaining water. Now, if you're dry, and if you're um, also a person that sweats a lot and you're use, losing a lot of water, um, you're going to become dis dehydrated. So um, we're not going to leave out salt completely, but we want to choose a salt that's going to retain just enough fluid so that we're neither too dry, neither too um, juicy, if you get what I'm saying. So if you can, if you have a, um, a resonance or a, a yeah, resonance um, to it, um, use pink salt in the summer or a salt maybe that you find locally. So the recipe is um, basically you, I don't have um, um, a fennel bulb to show you, but you would just slice the fennel down the middle and cut it then in very thin slices. The thinner you can, the better. If you have a mandolin, that's easy um, as well, or a food processor. But this could also be done with a beet, with a carrot, um, with other, um, vegetables that um, tend to be eaten raw in the summer. You could even do it with celery. Um, and basically you make this vinaigrette with oil and lime and salt, and you um, pour it over the top of whatever you've chopped up. And then the idea is that you um, press it down with a plate or something um, weighty 
so that you marinate the salad. And the idea is that you do this several hours in advance. For example, if you know you're going to have this at lunch, prepare it in the morning. That way you're out of the kitchen when, um, uh, when it's hot. And then also you have something ready when it's time to eat. And that way, um, this um, vinaigrette or the sauce will have broken down the fibers of the raw, making it cooked, not officially cooked, but it'll be more... Um, your body will be more receptive to eating or to digesting this kind of, of, um, of vegetable raw. Um, and another idea also for those who love um, grated carrots, grated carrots, easy to make, everyone loves it. Um, one of the French um, favorites, you find grated carrots everywhere in any salad bar or any restaurant. Um, you can um, grate up a carrot and then lightly saute it in a small amount of water and oil um, it can be coconut oil, it can be ghee, which um, Ayurveda loves, um, clarified butter, Ayurvedic clarified butter, um, or um, coconut oil, did I say? Yeah. If you're cooking with coconut oil or olive oil, best not to go beyond a medium temperature. Otherwise, you're going to change the quality of those oils. Um, with ghee, you can go up to um, 252 degrees Celsius, and it's never going to change its qualities in terms of um, being difficult or um, turning into a trans fat. So anyways, you would just um, saute those carrots um, for two or three minutes in this um, half oil, half water. Um, we would call it a, a steam saute. Best way of um, cooking in the summer in terms of cooking um, with oil to cut the oil in half and use a little water. And for two or three minutes to take the raw edge off of the, um, of the carrots or the beets or whatever you decide to use. And then you can, uh, you can season that vegetable however you want. But it's just one way of um, cutting down on the raw, but keeping kind of that um, crunch and that juiciness that um, we look for when we're looking for um, eating raw foods. Does that make sense? Does that speak to you? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> so eating raw foods is going to be easier to digest at lunch and always um, in smaller quantities. Even if we're in the middle of the, um, the summer and maybe it's what your body's drawn to, eating a whole plate of raw food and a salad is really not the best thing um, you can do. Um, there's a timing for everything. And there's also, um, like I said, everything is situational and conditional. So an individual with a robust digestifier like a pitta individual can benefit from more raw. An individual who's more um, cold and dry um, ungrounded in nature, which we would call vata, or has that kind of those kind of qualities um, in them, they really want to have minimal amounts of raw and always made in a way that's digestible, meaning good amount of oil, um, marinated, um, eaten maybe with a, an avocado, which is always going to create um, more um, good fats and oils, or using their raw integrated into something cooked. Sometimes I put my salad at the bottom of whatever warm dish or hot dish I'm gonna put on top. So that way my salad gets cooked. Don't do it always, but um, sometimes, or if I wanna have those raw carrots or something raw that might be more difficult to digest, um, I'll put that and weave them in or mix it into my grain like quinoa or rice um, or into a soup or something like that. So um, just one other way of, um, of using raw. Okay, um, so why um, don't we use raw again? Because it slows down digestion, it's rough, it's drying, it's always going to ask for more water. And in summer, we're looking to stay juicy and hydrated. So um, we want to um, rehydrate or help those um, foods that tend to be drying in nature and raw food is drying in nature. Um, the positive qualities of raw, which I th think we'll all agree, um, is the vitamin content, it's the vitality, it's all those minerals, um, it's the enzymes. Um, and of course we need those. Um, but if you don't have the digestive strength to um, digest, absorb, assimilate the raw, then who cares if it has all those great properties? If you can't take them in, then what's the use? So it's better to transform them in a way that you can benefit. And just know that um, not all minerals, not all vitamins are destroyed in the cooking process. Um, a lot of um, vitamins are water soluble, which means that they'll be um, still there once you've cooked. And in terms of cooking methods for the summer, um, one of the um, best cooking methods is steaming in terms of vegetables, because steaming, um, 
doesn't add a lot of heat to the um, um, to the vegetable, let's say, um, compared to like cooking in the oven or um, sauteing and, and, and cooking like a ragu or something that you um, cook over a long time on the stove. Steam cooking um, is really ideal for the season because the vegetables or whatever you steam is not going to retain its um, heat for a long time, which is um, not so bad. We don't absolutely have to eat hot, hot, hot in terms of temperature in the summer. Whereas in the winter, it's a little more important. So steam cooking all along, all throughout the year is not really recommended. It's good to change the way that you cook your food, the um, food preparation methods um, as you go through the season. So steaming is good. Keeping things super simple, steaming, pot of greens, like I was saying earlier, and then um, um, adding a little pizzazz with a sauce. So with that said, let's make a sauce. Um, so um, the sauce I'd like to make is um, the yogurt garden herb sauce. Is anybody out there vegan? One vegan. Okay, so I'll give you an alternative for the yogurt. Now, um, as we're um, on the subject of yogurt and vegans, um, one, um, one um, mistake that can be made um, when people go away from animal products is to go towards alternatives that might be actually worse than eating dairy. And um, one of those things is all of those modern inventions around soy, like soy yogurt, really bad. Very damp, very cold in nature, slows down digestion. So really something that I wouldn't recommend. Um, and also a lot of those, um, even like coconut yogurt, um, rice-based yogurts, things like that, you have to be really careful because they're very damp. They um, ask for a lot of energy from the body to digest, to warm them up to a temperature that's assimilable by the body. So um, best to, um, if you're going to use those, make them yourself rather than buying something um, in a store that's um, sat in the cold for a long time that really has a long, um, cold um, nature to it. And then um, if you do um, digest dairy, um, it is the best time of the year to, um, to enjoy it. Um, however, sometimes um, that dairy needs a little help, um, especially um, to be digested for individuals um, who are kapha in nature, who have a lot of phlegm or who are like, can have like yogurt-like conditions in the body. And I'll, I'll talk about that as we go. Um, so let me get the recipe up here. And um, if anybody's um, eaten, um, been to India or eaten in a, an Indian restaurant, um, oh, sorry. I forgot this recipe. Um, I'll talk about it later. Just remind me. <laughs> and I need to open up my doors. All of a sudden, the sun has come out. Yay. OK. Um, so um, the recipe is the yogurt garden herb sauce. And um, so this is very similar to a raita, if you um, have ever had a raita before, which is basically um, a yogurt that's been um, spiced and added to herbs, um, to a cooked vegetable. Often you find, um, traditionally what you find is probably a tomato inside or um, cucumber. So it makes a very cooling side dish or sauce to put over um, grains, beans, other um, vegetables. So my version of it today is this, um, sauce that um, could come from your garden, the main ingredients. Um, I'll show you what I've um, got from my garden this morning. I don't actually have a garden. I have a small terrace that's about this wide and I have pots all over and I have especially have um, um, herbs. So for this recipe, we're going to need as well um, to use um, a heat source um, because we're going to do a tempering. Um, this is also um, called a chonk or a vagar. Ayurveda has this, um, this comes from um, Ayurveda that comes from India. It's kind of um, stems from um, Indian cooking as well, which is not um, um, Ayurvedic per se, but it's to um, activate spices in, a, um, in an oily substance. And so today we're going to use ghee and um, then some spices that will help digest the um, difficult to digest properties in yogurt. Now, let me get the, um, the herbs just a minute. Um, 
So again, this recipe is very versatile. Um, you don't have to use um, these herbs um, and there's no like set recipe, but just let me show you what um, came from my garden this morning. So I have some microgreens, which are, I think these are Russian kale. I have some Tulsi, which is holy basil. Um, I have chervil, um, some oregano, thyme, uh, rosemary, chives, and it could be one, um, one herb or a mixture of many. Um, contrary to other foods, all of these can go happily together. There's no problem with food combining. I have some nasturtiums, edible flowers. So eat your flowers in the summer, excellent for health. Sage, um, basil, a couple types of basil. I have sorrel, um, some um, hyssop, which is very cooling, a a tarragon, this is another kind of basil. And then um, this is Madagascar pepper, um, which is also known as, um, oh, the name escapes me right now. Um, it's often used in Vietnamese cooking. Maybe if there's someone who lives in Asia um, knows the name of this, but right now um, the name is escaping me. It's often used like in nems and that kind of thing, like spring rolls. So um, what I'm gonna do with these spices, or um, these herbs, excuse me, is I'm going to, um, make my life easy and um, um, cut them up um, with a scissors. So what I do is I put them in a, um, um, a bowl or a glass jar and I'm going to use a, a kitchen scissors to cut them up. And um, in this recipe that I suggest though, doing this tempering, um, which means activating um, spices and herbs and other substances, onion, um, garlic, um, leeks, in an oily substance um, is not um, mandatory for this recipe um, to be good, especially if you're avoiding cooking with oil. So you could very simply just um, cut these up, make up the, um, the base, which is gonna be yogurt or some um, other creamy substance. It could be um, cream, it could be skir, um, Greek yogurt, it could be cottage cheese. It could also be buttermilk, um, kefir milk, um, fromage blanc, um, for the, um, those who know French cooking or French products. Um, it could also be um, coconut. Why not coconut cream? Um, all kinds of um, possibilities. So just some kind of um, creamy substance. Um, and then um, you would just mix everything together. You would skip the step of having to, um, have, having to do the tempering, which is the activation. Okay, so who is? I wish you could smell this. Um, now my kitchen scissors, I'm looking for my scissors. I've got a lot going on here. Um, <laughs> just a minute. Whoa, what did I do with my scissors? I lost my scissors. Okay. Oh, here they are. Okay, so I'm just going to use my scissors and uh, cut them up. And uh, I asked the, veg the, the herbs and they said they prefer being um, cut like this rather than with a knife. <laughs> My vegetables talk to me. Okay, so these are ready. Um, and again, you can use one. It could be only mint if you wanted to, or only um, cilantro if you wanted, or only basil, or whatever inspires you, whatever you have on, the, on hand. But it could also, um, if you want to use dry herbs, that's also possible as well. Again, there's no right or wrong. Um, and the um, Ayurvedic police is not going to drop, um, drop on by at any time. So this is also just to show you that um, cooking Ayurvedically doesn't mean using spices that come from um, far away. It's things we find in locally as well. So, Here we go. Hopefully everyone can see. So for, um, for the, um, the tempering, the idea here is to um, use a, um, um, some kind of fat. And so um, I chose to use a ghee and um, 
according to Ayurveda, ghee is um, considered to be a vehicle, meaning it's a transport method. So anything that's um, cooked with it or eaten with it is going to be potentialized. It's going to go where it needs to go with um, more ease, if you will. And um, the ghee I'm going to use today is yellow. Um, and because it's infused with turmeric. Turmeric is um, um, one of the um, spices here. I'll just show you the, the jar of ghee. Hopefully everybody can see it. Um, turmeric is a, a good spice to use in the summer and all year round. And um, just simply to let you know that, um, oh, I have a problem here, just a second. Sorry, my um, heat source isn't plugged in. One moment. Sorry, technical difficulty. Okay, I'm back. So, um, um, we need to be um, careful with, um, or not careful, sorry, I'm talking about the turmeric. So um, turmeric is best absorbed in the body um, when it's cooked or rehydrated. So um, meaning in a liquid substance, whether it be in a tea, an herbal tea or a sauce, um, but it also gets where it needs to go in a, um, uh, a fatty substance, whether it be oil or coconut oil or ghee or butter, um, Turmeric is best assimilated in the body when it's in a, or one of the ways is when it's in an oily substance. Okay, and then um, some spices according to Ayurveda that are um, particularly helpful for digesting dairy um, is um, cumin. There would also be pepper, um, but pepper in the summer um, is going to be too heating. You could consider using pink peppercorns, which are more sweet and astringent in nature. So not as heating as black pepper. So um, this would be a nice addition to this recipe that I didn't, um, I didn't add, but um, it'll give some nice color because not only is um, the, are the ingredients important, but also the, the visual aspect of what we eat. What we eat needs to be um, pleasing. It needs to be beautiful. And that's why I like to use um, flowers when I can. Okay. Okay, so um, this is getting warm and I'm going to um, simply um, heat my ghee on a low flame. And then once the ghee is melted, I'm going to add, hopefully you can see them, mustard seeds, which would be optional. Um, some people have allergies to mustard and um, cumin seeds. And um, this not only tastes particularly good in this recipe, but it's also gonna be helpful for digesting the dairy. And um, once my ghee is melted, I'm going to put the seeds in, sorry. I had to take it off the heat. I have this electric um, heater or um, electric uh, stove and it's difficult to, um, to regulate. So um, basically you'd want to warm this and I'm not putting it back on the heat until the cumin and the mustard seeds start to dance. Um, and when they dance, then you take it off um, the heat. And then at this point you would add in um, your fresh herbs. Now the fresh herbs, again, don't need to go through this process. You could put them in raw, but I think that um, personally, for me, it's um, easier to digest and gives a little crunchy, um, crunchy effect. And even though it's not one of the six tastes, um, crunchy is a good quality to have in our diet. If our food is too soft, like baby food, it's not very digestible. And then the recipe calls also for um, a fourth a teaspoon of turmeric, that can be more, it can be less, it can be left out, up to you. Um, but because I have turmeric already in my ghee, I'm not gonna add it now. 
Okay, so that's the tempering part. And um, now the base, um, which I've already basically prepared for you, it's um, yogurt. Um, and today I chose a sheep's yogurt. And um, I add a little water to make it a little more um, liquid. And it all depends on your desired effect, what you're looking for. I'm gonna take the um, screen share off. Um, it depends on what you're gonna be using it for. Um, but I um, chose today to have it um, a little thicker. And so then um, I would just add my tempering directly to the yogurt, stir it up. And there's my um, herbed garden or my yogurt herbed garden sauce. Now the turmeric, of course, would give um, more of a yellow hue um, up to you what you're looking for. Now this would be excellent if you were um, if you like cucumbers and you want something cooling to grate a cucumber inside. Um, just know that the cucumber is going to give off some some water, so it's going to make a a, um, a thinner sauce. Um, for those of you who avoid cucumbers because they're too difficult to digest, which is the case for some peeling them and taking the seeds out can help with digestibility of cucumbers, um, especially um, for people who have cucumber burps, meaning the cucumber comes up again and again. Um, that's one way of making them more um, digestible. Um, for people who have um, tendencies towards um, candidosis, um, cu cucumbers can be a real problem, better to um, avoid them. Otherwise, um, as I mentioned, this is very versatile. Um, you could use this sauce over rice. I love a yogurt rice in the summer. It's a way of adding a little protein um, to a grain that doesn't have a lot of protein. Um, you could also um, put it over any other grain, um, putting it over cooked vegetables like steamed vegetables. If you were to steam potatoes or to steam um, kale, it's especially good with um, cooked um, spinach. Excellent with zucchini. Um, zucchini could even be um, grated in here or grating a carrot. Um, excellent as well um, with an avocado um, cubed up inside or even blended together to make a really thick um, sauce. So um, all kinds of possibilities. If you were to put more water in it and dilute it even more, it could be a salad dressing for um, salad greens. Um, so many, many ways of using it. The one thing I suggest not um, using it with, and here's where the Ayurvedic food um, combination comes in, is to avoid having it with any animal protein. Basic rule of Ayurveda is when you have one source of animal protein, only one. When you start mixing different animals or even different um, substances from the same animal, let's say cow's yogurt and um, um, hamburger or beef steak, not a good um, combination because these foods require different, um, different pathways of digestion and they create confusion for our digestion. So best when you're having protein, especially animal protein or a dairy product to choose one, um, but not more than one in terms of having it in the same meal. Um, other things that um, would be um, to notice to um, have this kind of sauce, this raita sauce, more um, at lunch than at dinner. Uh, we talked about um, uh, trying to avoid eating yogurt at night. And um, for the promise that I made um, to the one vegan who's with us, um, you could uh, make an alternative for the, um, for the yogurt by making um, um, the other recipe that follows. And um, basically it's um, replacing the dairy with almonds. Um, so this is what I call the green goddess sauce. It's basically the same um, recipe where we don't do the tempering. And it's to take almonds and soak them and um, peel them. I don't know if I have some here. Yes, I do. Um, almonds are best digested when they've um, been rehydrated and their skins, which are tannic in nature, which means heating and irritating, potentially irritating to the um, lining of the, the colon, um, they're easier digested this way. And um, out of all of the um, 
Wow, I have some spices hanging there. But anyways, um, out of all the um, nuts um, and seeds, um, Ayurveda would say that um, almonds are the most sattvic, meaning the most uh, are the easiest to digest. Um, and also, if you want to um, really um, get their um, good benefits, the protein content in them, and all of the, the positive things, better to soak them overnight and peel them, and then use them blended up like in this recipe in a sauce. Um, but if you don't have almonds, it could also be sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, um, um, a nut or seed that I really like to use is um, shelled hemp seeds, which blend up really easily. You don't have to soak them for very long. So this would be um, ways or ideas, a recipe and idea as an alternative to the raita um, to make something vegan based. So the recipe is basically almonds soaked in water, um, a good quality oil, a little bit of lime, lime or lemon, um, which also can be added to the, um, the sauce that we just made, the raita. Um, and um, sweetener, if you want, um, not necessary, and then salt and pepper to taste. And even, um, even using a little bit of pepper, black pepper in the summer wouldn't be um, too heating, especially if you're having a, a dairy, which is cooling. But if you really want to cut down on the heat that you're um, taking inside, better to use pink peppercorns rather than um, black. And, um, and voila, so for those two recipes, do you have any questions? I'm going to look in the chat. I see it's already um, one o'clock, time has flown. <laughs> um, along the lines of yogurt, um, just a second, Julia, um, a way that um, Ayurveda recommends eating yogurt in general is to dilute it. Um, I'm sure you've all had a lassi before, um, either with a meal in a, an Indian restaurant or at the end of a meal. Um, when we um, add a little bit of air to the yogurt and dilute it with water, so um, using a whisk and whisking it up, um, it's a way of uh, transforming the proteins in yogurt that could be difficult to digest. Yogurt is very dense, it's cold, it's heavy. And if you whisk it up and dilute it with a little water, put some spices in it, it's a much easier way to digest than um, just eating it out of the, out of the pot. Um, and also adding some digestive spices. It could be sweet spices like cinnamon or cardamom. It could be fennel. Um, Dr. Ladd, my um, Ayurvedic, my first Ayurvedic teacher has a nice um, lassi re recipe for summer. I'll give it to you now. It's um, three fourths a cup of water, a fourth a cup of yogurt. So three fourths part, a one part, um, a fourth a part yogurt, um, a fourth of a lime. Um, a, sugar is optional, up to you. And a pinch of cumin to make it salty or a pinch or two of cardamom to make it a little sweet. All blended up either with a whisk, a fork, um, or a blender. And that way you have um, a nice um, digestive cooling um, drink to have at the end of a meal or accompany a meal. So one idea, you could also use mint to have a mint um, lassi. You could put rose water in to make a, a rose water lassi. The kind of lassi I would highly um, suggest avoiding is mango lassies and banana lassies, which according to Ayurveda are a terrible food combination. Any kind of tropical fruit mixed with um, dairy product is very difficult for digestion. Um, have that once in a while, once in a blue moon, and when you go um, to India or you go to a, an Indian restaurant, but just know that it's not Ayurvedic and it's not the best thing you can do um, for your digestion. So Julie, I'll take your question. Um, I've just got a very quick question um, and a request. My question is that here in the UK anyway, it's become very fashionable now, rather than having cow's milk um, in coffee and tea, there's oat milk, various different types. I just want to get your opinion on oat milk, which has now become so popular. I would say in the last 12 months, really, it's really taken over. And my request is you keep mentioning um, food combination. And there's quite a lot of subtleties involved in it. It isn't just, you know, grains and, you know, vegetables or whatever. I'd really like to request in another session, you focus on that area, because I think it seems to be so important, but um, that's for the future. Just now, I'd like to know your opinion on this oat milk. Yes, um, let me um, tell you about the food combining just very rapidly. It's true that um, um, what we eat with what we eat, um, 
normally should be natural and normal, but we're so influenced by um, our culture, by um, what we read in magazines or what we see on the internet, about um, also about modern food where, oh, this, you know, this new superfood or this combination is eclectic. We're mixing different cuisines from different parts of the, of the world. And it's more about taste. It's about finding exciting tastes or um, things like that. But um, a lot of the combinations are really erroneous. And um, if we were really to listen, if we were more in tune with ourselves, there are things that we would never go towards. Like in, in France, one of the, um, I think it's the number one, um, or like the favorite food of French people. It's a blanquette de veau. It's veal cooked in milk. And even in the Bible, um, even the Hebrews, they say this, never to mix the milk um, of the mother with the meat of the same animal. So veal and milk, terrible food combining, but it's like the favorite food of French people and eaten all the time. But um, the ancients said that this wasn't right. And if they say it, it's probably coming from a place of knowing of kind of wisdom. So we've gotten very far away from what's, um, what's intuitive or what our body wants or body needs. And so the more we go back to that, I think the um, food combining would be, um, will be easier. And now to answer your question about the milks, um, these um, alternative milks have become very popular and um, there's been a lot of talk as well and like you say like the past year about um, what kind of milk um, to have um, there's a lot of um, um, negative um, information about almonds because most of the almonds come from California and they use super intensive watering um, methods to keep those um, almond trees growing and so it's overprotection, it's not good for the environment. So big X for almonds. Um, then um, rice, people say you shouldn't eat rice because there are traces of arsenic in rice. And um, you know the list goes on for why we shouldn't have all those things. But it's true that, um, and then also there's the water that's used to make those, um, those milks. And I'm not talking about homemade milks, I'm talking about the milk that you buy in a Tetra pack, you know, the long conservation. Um, those require a lot of water, a lot of processing and, um, in general, those milks that we buy in those containers really have no prana. And if you want to um, apply Ayurveda to your life without thinking about anything else, the two things would be, um, is it rich in prana? Is this food um, vital? Does it have vitality in it? And the second one is, can I digest it? And normally foods that don't have um, vitality in them are difficult to digest. But um, that's another story. Um, but um, out of all of those um, milks, it's true that the oat milk um, is probably the easiest to digest, maybe takes um, the less amount of water. It's more, um, I don't know, um, more ecological, I don't know. Um, easy um, for all of the doshas, all the constitutions, so maybe oat milk um, would be the best. The idea though behind all of those milks um, is to make them yourself. Um, the only thing is when you make an oat milk or you make a rice milk, it's never going to have that same consistency as what comes out of a, a pack or one of those um, containers. But just know that um, you're going to have more vitality. Um, you're going to have to make it fresh because um, when you make those milks in advance and you keep them in the fridge for a week, um, even up after one day, the consistency totally changes. And also you can't really put them in hot um, beverages or you can't really um, cook them because they turn into kind of a gloop. You have like a porridge when you finish. So that's one of the, um, one of the pulls for um, buying the milk and that way it's already done for you. You don't have to do anything. Um, personally, I think that um, seed-based milks um, are, um, are healthier, um, especially when you make them your own, like sunflower seed milk, sesame seed, um, pumpkin seed, hemp seed. Hemp seed, I think, is um, hemp is, is rich in protein, um, super easy to digest. You can make it on the spot. Um, also, um, another one is um, tiger nuts. Does anybody know tiger nuts? Um, yeah, tiger nuts. It's uh, um, also known as souche in French. I don't know what the other words are in other languages, but it's a little tuber. It uh, grows under, um, under a grass. And so it's not a nut, it's not a seed. So anybody with um, um, intolerance for that, it's not a, um, it's not a grain either. Um, and there's no gluten in it. Um, there's no dairy in it. And um, the glycemic index is very low. So individuals who have um, too damp conditions or um, tendencies towards candida, they could probably use it. But it's, um, it's made in Spain into a drink called horchata. 
Um, so they, um, it's ground up um, just like an almond to make a milk and it's very sweet tasting. It's easy to find um, on the internet, um, often used in Africa as well. And that's something that I use when I want one of those milks um, because I don't need to soak overnight. I don't need to um, do a lot of preparations. I can even put the powder, it comes in a powder form as well, right into my drink or um, pour some hot water over it, mix it up and I have, um, I have a healthy um, drink. So I don't know if I really answered your question, Julia, but um, it's true that those, those drinks are such a modern um, invention um, and not always so digestible for the body. The one that really we should avoid it with kept, um, a few exceptions is soy milk. Um, soy is very difficult to digest, especially when it's cold. Um, for individuals who have um, um, a lot of heat in the head, um, soy milk can be good, but soy milk should never be consumed cold, always heated with spices, um, because out of all of the legumes, all of the beans, it's the most oily and heavy of um, beans to digest. That's why it's very difficult um, for our systems to, to digest. Is that okay? <laughs> my mind so understood. <laughs> Maybe more than you wanted to hear or wanted to know, but... Um, Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, so there's one recipe that we didn't get to this morning that I was hoping to, but um, we'll do um, in the afternoon, and that's um, the cooling cilantro coconut chutney. So I wish you all a bon appetit. Enjoy your lunch. And um, if you have questions that um, bubble up, um, write them down and we'll cover them this afternoon. And um, I thank you for your interest, for your enthusiasm, and um, I wish you were closer so you could come to my kitchen and we could have lunch together. <laughs>